Welcome to Share My Lesson. In this video, we will look at the solutions for the 2023 ANC Intermediate Division questions. Make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and check out my blog for more information. Let's proceed to the solutions. Since the lesson is 40 minutes long, we have to divide it by 2 to find that half the lesson is equal to 20 minutes. Since the lesson starts at 10.50, 20 minutes later it will be 11.10. This means that the answer is C. The angles around the point when the two rectangles meet are 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 130 degrees, and x degrees. We can write an equation to find x. We can solve this to find that x is equal to 50 degrees. This means that the answer is E. We can evaluate the numerator, which is equal to 9, and we can evaluate the denominator, which is equal to 24. We can simplify this fraction into 3 eighths. This means that the answer is C. Since 1 meter is equal to 4 by 25 centimeters and 50 centimeters is equal to 2 by 25 centimeters, the rectangle can be divided into 4 squares horizontally and 2 vertically for a total of 4 multiplied by 2, which are 8 squares. This means that the answer is E. Fifty seven multiplied by nine hundred and fifty three is larger than fifty multiplied by nine hundred, but is smaller by sixty multiplied by one thousand. This means that the answer is between forty five thousand and sixty thousand. The only answer that matches these conditions is C. To find the area of a parallelogram, we have to multiply the base by its height, which is measured by a perpendicular line. PQ, which is the base, is 10 cm, which means that the height is 6 cm. The only perpendicular line in the diagram is PT, which means that the answer is D. Let the scenic route be equal to x and the direct route be equal to y. We can write an equation for x based on the question. x is equal to y plus 5. From this, we get that x minus y is equal to 5. Also, we know that x plus y is equal to 35. If we add equations 1 and 2, we get that 2x is equal to 40 and x is equal to 20. This means that y is equal to 35 minus 20, which is 15. So the answer is C. Two to the power zero is equal to one. And we know that one to the power anything is also equal to 1. This means that this has to be equal to 1. So the answer is A. The 
let x be the unknown divisor. We know that 0 0.05 divided by x is equal to 50. We can solve this equation to find that x is equal to 1 over 1000, which is equal to 0 0.001. This means that the answer is D. The angles mark 3x and 2x are supplementary, so that 3x plus 2x is equal to 180 degrees, which means that x is equal to 36. From the triangle ABC, we know that x plus y plus 90 is equal to 180 degrees. Substituting x is equal to 36 into this equation, we find that y is equal to 180 minus 126, which is equal to 54. This means that the answer is C. If the first number is 1, we can write down the following possibilities. 1 plus 2 plus 8, 1 plus 3 plus 7, and 1 plus 4 plus 6. If we start with 2, the possibilities are 2 plus 3 plus 6 and 2 plus 4 plus 5. Altogether, there are 3 plus 2, which are 5 possibilities. This means that the answer is C. We can find the answer to this question by testing out the different answers. We can make 55 by adding 14 by 41. We can make 110 by adding 19 by 91. And we can make 132 by adding 66 by 66. And we can make 154 by adding 68 by 86. The only answer that we can't make is 186 which means that the answer is E. The total area of this rectangular flag is equal to 6 multiplied by 4, which is 24. The area of the first shaded triangle is equal to 6 the area of the next shaded triangle is equal to 4 and the area of the third shaded triangle is equal to 4. The total shaded area is equal to 6 plus 4 plus 4 which is equal to 14. This means that the ratio of the shaded flag is equal to 14 divided by 24 which can be simplified to 7 over 12. This means that the answer is E. From the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, A and B have to be the largest of the 6. This means that A is equal to 6 and B is equal to 5. We know that C over D and E over F have to be whole numbers. The only numbers that satisfy these are 3 over 1 and 4 over 2. We can simplify this to get 30 plus 3 minus 2 which is equal to 31. This means that the answer is B. Let Abdul's age be equal to X and Bipin's age be equal to X plus Y and the common age difference is equal to Y. This means that Kai's age is x plus 2y, and Denise's age is x plus 3y. We know that Abdul's age and Bipin's age add up to 80, which gives the equation 2x plus y is equal to 80. We know that Kai's and Denise's ages 
add up to 34, which gives the second equation 2x plus 5i is equal to 34. If we subtract equation number 1 from equation number 2, which gives us 4y is equal to 16 and y is equal to 4, and also x is equal to 7. If we substitute these values into Denise's age, we get 7 plus 12, which is equal to 19. This means that Denise is 19 years old, so the answer is D. We can assume that most of the 1 million subscribers from 0 to 999,999 will be available. This table is made by simply following the annual doubling until 1 million subscribers is passed. We can write the table with the values of years from now and subscribers which are counted by 1000s. In the year 0, there is 1 or 1000 subscribers. In the first year, there's 2 or 2,000 subscribers. We can keep writing this until the 10th year, where there's 1,024 or 1 million and 24,000 subscribers. So the phone numbers run out in between 9 and 10 years from now. This means that the answer is B. Let's draw the rest of the square. As you can see, we can divide the square into three equal areas, which we can mark as A. The area of the entire square is equal to 15 multiplied by 15, which means that the area of one of the A's is equal to 15 multiplied by 50 divided by three, which is equal to 75. If we let the height of the triangle A be equal to Y, we can write an equation for y. We can solve this to find that y is equal to 10 centimeters. This means that x is equal to 5 centimeters. So the answer is A. Let A be the hidden coefficient and let x, y be one of the possible internet solutions to 2x plus a, y is equal to 25 for this value of a. Then 2x is one of the 12 even numbers, 2, 4, all the way up to 24. And a, y will be an odd number, one of 23, 21, 19, all the way down to 1. So a is a device of one of the numbers 23, 21, 19, through to 1, which means that a is odd and a is less than or equal to 23. So a is one of the values 23, 21, all the way down to 1. For each value of a, there is at least one solution, such as y is equal to 1, x is equal to 1 half of 25 minus a. So altogether, there is a total of 12 possible values for a. This means that the answer is b. Let A be one side of the larger square and B be one side of the smaller square. This means that the initial perimeter is equal to 4A and the new perimeter is equal to 4A plus 2B. Since it increases 10%, we can write an equation for 2B over 4A, which is equal to 10 on 100. And solve this, we find that B is equal to A on 5. This means that the increase of area is equal to a squared on 25 and a squared, multiplied by 100. By solving this equation, we find that the increase of area is equal to 4%. This means that the answer is b.
when I have none because why he sold will be will be seven why dog he sold. So now the bad thing in four years time we can write an equation. So from this we can write an equation to find that y is equal to twelve. This means that I will be nine plus twelve, which is twenty one year old then. To find my current age, I subtract four from twenty one to find that I am now seventeen years old. This means that the answer is E. Starting with the chain type and running 4 kilometers south and heading east, the beast creates its broader circles of radius 4, 3 and 1 kilometers as the chain wraps around the wall of the building. We can then calculate the areas of each quarter circle. We then add them up to find that it gives a total of 13 pi kilometers square. This means that the answer is E. Let the four numbers be equal to A, B, C, and D. Based on the question, we can write that A plus 3 is equal to B minus 3, which is equal to 3C, which is equal to D over 3. From this equation, we can write three more equations. We can mark this respectively as equation number 1, 2, and 3. Based on the question, we also know that a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 32. Using the equations from 1 through to 3, we can write another equation. We can solve this to find that 16a is equal to 48 and a is equal to 3. We can put this into equation number 1 to find b, which is 9. We can put this into equation number 2 to find that c is equal to 2 and we could put this into equation number 3 to find that d is equal to 18. The large two numbers are b and d. The sum of these is 18 plus 9 which is 27. This means that the answer is d. Since we know that the surface areas of these prisms are equal, we can write an equation using x and equal them. We can then solve it to find that x is equal to 13y plus 10 on 12. For x to be an integer, y must be even. We can then check these values. The only values that work are when y is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3. So the only possible values for x plus y is 2 plus 3, which is 5. This means that the answer is A. To solve this question, we can test the answers and see which three-digit number works. We know that this number is less than or equal to 199. Try A, 9. What we need to do is find the numbers that are divisible by 9 from 100 to 200. These numbers are as follows 108, 117, all the way up to 198. What we need to do is add the digits of the numbers and divide it by the 3 digit number and it should give the answer 9. 108 divided by 9 is equal to 12. This is because 1 plus 8 is equal to 9, and we divide it by 108. 1 plus 1 plus 7 is equal to 9. 117 divided by 9 is equal to 13. 
120 divided by 3, because 1 plus 2 is 3, is equal to 40. None of these numbers work, because the quotients are not equal to 9. Try B, 10. This time, the quotient has to be equal to 10 for it to be the correct answer. The digits of 100 add up to 1, when 100 divided by 1 is 100. The digits of 110 add up to 2, 110 divided by 2 is equal to 55. The digits of 120 add up to 3, and 120 divided by 3 is equal to 40. Now try answer C, 11. This time the quotient has to be equal to 11. For 110, the digits add up to 2. And 110 divided by 2 is equal to 55. This is not equal to 11, so it doesn't work. The digits of 121 add up to 4. 121 divided by 4 is equal to 30.25, and this, that doesn't work. Try 198. 1 plus 9 plus 8 is equal to 18. 198 divided by 18 is equal to 11. This solution works. This means that the answer is C. Based on the information of the question, we can label the diagram as follows. Using Pythagorean theorem, we can find that height of one of the small equilateral triangles. This is equal to root 3. Using Pythagorean theorem again, we can find the side length of the large hexagon. This is equal to root 7. The ratio of x to 1 is equal to root 7 to 1. The larger hexagon and the smaller hexagon are both similar hexagons, so the ratio of the area doubles. This gives the ratio of 7 to 1. Since there's one stamp over when dividing by 2 and by 5, the last digit, x, the number of stamps, must be 1. Also, x is a multiple of 7, so it will be that x is equal to 7y, but y has the largest digit of 3. Now check y is equal to 3, 13, 23, and so on. For the first case, where all other remainders are 1. We can write the table as follows. We also write the remainders when we divide x by 3, x by 4, and x by 6. We need to find the possibility that all these remainders are equal to 1. The smallest possibility to have this condition is when there's a total of 301 stamps. This means that the answer is 301. We can label the diagram as shown, where y is the side length of the small square. Using Pythagorean theorem, we can find the length of fg, which is equal to 5. The triangles EFG, CDG, BFA are all similar triangles. Using the rules of similar triangles, we find that CG on 4 is equal to y on 3. We can solve this equation to find that cg is equal to 4y on 3. Using similar triangles again, we find that bf on 3 is equal to y on 4, which gives that bf is equal to 3y on 4. Now that we know the values of cg and bf, we can write an equation for fg. Fg is equal to Cg plus Y plus Fb. This is equal to 
4y on 3 plus y plus 3y on 4, which is equal to 37y on 12. Earlier, when we used by diagram theorem to find that fg is equal to 5, we can then equal 37y on 12 is equal to 5. We solve this to find that y is equal to 60 on 37. We can't simplify this, so a is equal to 60 and b is equal to 37. This means that a plus b is equal to 97. The count goes around the circle several times with odd numbers else staying in and even number else dropping out. The stay and drop pattern is not affected if an even number is subtracted at any point. So we can assume whenever Elvin is due to count an odd number, he restarts at 1. The count goes around the circle 4 times. As you can see, we can write a table using before the cycle and the count and after the cycle. At first, there are 1000 elves. Then, the even number of elves drop out, leaving a total of 500 elves. This continues on repeating until the number becomes odd, which is 125. This is where Alvin drops out. After the cycle, there are 63 elves. However, Alvin drops out, so you have to minus this by 1 which leaves 62 elves. This means that the answer is 62. For any distance rolled, the larger wheel travels 105 and 70, which can be simplified to 3 on 2 as far as the smaller wheel. So the circumference of the large traced wheel is 3 on 2 that of the small traced wheel, which means that the radii are also in the same ratio. Consequently, the distance between the two traced circles is half the radius of the small circle and also one third of the radius of the larger circle. This means that the radius of the large circle divided by 3 is equal to the square root of 120 squared plus 35 squared. We can simplify this to find that this is equal to 5 multiplied by 25, which is equal to 125. So the radius of the larger circle is equal to 3 times 5 times 25, which is equal to 375. Orient the rectangle to be 6 wide and 3 high. Each tiling will have a pattern of breaks, which we define as being vertical lines that extend the full height of the rectangle. Between breaks is an unbroken tiling of an n by 3 rectangle. By carefully working through possibilities, we find all possible unbroken tilings from widths 1 to 6. When the width is 1, tilings is 1. When the width is 2, the unbroken tilings are 2. In a similar way, we can find the unbroken tilings when the widths are 3, 4, 5 and 6. Then the number of broken tilings of width n is calculated by considering the number of tilings of width n multiplied by the number of unbroken tilings of width n minus m. These are added up for m is equal to 1 all the way up to n minus 1. Then the total is calculated by adding the unbroken tilings by the broken tilings. We calculate the total all the way up to when the width is equal to 6. This gives that the 6th total is equal to 170. This means that the answer is 170. We have 
not completed the 2023 AMC Intermediate Solutions. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and share this video with anyone else you would think would benefit from it.